Yo, 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 what's good, what's good? This is Dex. Queen Esther here, crowned it. And this is another episode of Complicated Discord. Well, welcome back, uh, Discorders. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, by the Thank way, yeah, I, just, I just kind of threw that in there. So, yeah, so Esther, smile. We, we, we ain't go over the whole Discorders thing. <laughs> yeah, we really did. I was thinking about it. It sounds cool, though. I think that's what we should call like our um, supporters. Well, there you have it. Welcome back, Discorders. Uh, today, we are joined by Alexander Benedict. Uh, boom, boom, boom. The, the, the <laughs> founder and creator of the flyest clothing line out to date. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> tell him about yourself yet again. How y'all doing? Hey, it's just your boy from Austin, Texas. You know, viable. Man, sound mighty ashy the way you rubbing them together. <laughs> 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 it be like that sometimes. Hey, the weather in Texas is crazy, man. It's cold as Oh air. my God, I almost spit on my drink. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Matter of fact, I had, to, I had to relocate my avocado plant, man. It <laughs> sound like he was rubbing together through two uh, sticks to create fire. <laughs> We're going to pause because we're going right to let Mr. Benedict finish. Go ahead, Mr. Benedict. Yes, um, I'm, I'm doing swell, you know. Um, my clothing line is st- is still out there. Um, it could be doing better, but hey, we're not got we ain't got the time for that. Don't get that up positive. Hey, hey, y'all okay. heard support your black businesses, man. Cor- oh, hey, if coronavirus is hurting big places like Walmart and and Target, they definitely hurting the little guy, man. Think about it. Lululemon just had a discount. Lululemon never does. Never discount. has discount. I wrote a paper on them for my masters. I remember that. Yeah, they're going through it. So we're gonna have a swell show today. We're gonna start off like that because we're gonna it's gonna be popping disorders. There you go. I'm just looking at Dex. <laughs> hey, I like it. Is Wait, it frozen or is that how we just look? <laughs> yeah, you really <laughs> did look frozen. <laughs> yeah, that jokes. What, what, what you over there sipping on, Pete? Um, Ciroc. Out of, your, out of your pink Dixie cup. Yeah, I like my, I like my liquor meat, so like no Ooh. ice or nothing. Yeah, he is drinking like a grown man. Oh, I am a grown man. I was drinking like this was out when I was in high school. Okay, y'all want y'all It's not my thing. <laughs> I like my fancy mixed drinks. Okay, because you're a bartender too. Exactly. I'm not trying to get. Well, you know what? Pause. I personally think because one of my very very good friends gave me this idea. Since we do drink during the episodes and you are a bartender you should tell people what the recipes are Ooh. okay i'll tell you what starting next week what we're going to do is every time we have a show it's going to be a different drink and a different recipe some fancier than the other mm-hmm. i ain't gonna start with this one because you know whatever but next week this is an extra regular <laughs> uh so we're going to jump right in this um earlier this week queen and i had a very heated debate to say the least on wage disparities, uh, Queen feels like minimum wage should be raised to fifty to not fifteen dollars an hour for fast food workers. I unfortunately do not feel that way. Um, there are some personal plus financial uh, feelings behind mine. So before before we even get into it, Alex, what are your thoughts? From an economical standpoint, no. Just just your just your personal opinion. I'm just. I'm just I'm I'm at economics and everything. No, I don't think fifteen. No, we shouldn't raise because it's not just you. No, just no, no, no. Okay, but why do you say that? For one, I barely get my order right. Just this week, I ordered a board. I ordered a a a, a, bo- a burger to get cut in half, and what happens? The whole burger. Bro, you ask me in half, like that's that's some bougie shit. Bro, you see, if I'm paying you, if I'm paying for ABC, I should get ABC. What's the point of paying for something and not getting it? Believe it or not, that was my biggest thing. That's what I was telling, that's what I was telling Queen here. I was like, look, the problem is you go and you pay for these people and they're giving you Sub substandard work. Why should you give someone fifteen dollars an hour who can't even get a burger order right? It's not rocket science, you know. Listen, I understand where both of you are coming from, and I, I totally get it. I understand it. 
an <clears throat> economic standpoint. I totally do. But at the end of the day, there's enough money in general. So this is me being a woman and having a heart and thinking about the fact that, yes, not everyone has like papers behind their name and can go out there and get a, a high paying job. Most people probably can't do that anyway, but just because I can't do that, does that mean I'm not supposed to be able to pay my bills? And I do get the whole thing. It's a, it's a beginning job. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's cheap labor, blah, blah, blah. But you want five-star service for peanuts. I Yes, you do, because period. Can you go find a dollar menu at McDonald's today, really? Can you? you Just can. how the economy yeah. is Listen, listen, I'm, I'm not much of a doc- I don't I've not been there in a while, but I know that when I was like in college, they were really trying to dwindle away with it. OK, and it got listen. less and less fun. Listen, listen, I'm not asking for five star service. I'm asking you to not put pickles on a burger, bro. If that's five star, I don't want to see what's what's one star. Jesus Christ. Well, because my thing is you have to go out of your way to. To, to get see because me uh, unlike Pete who wants his sandwiches cut in in quarters and stuff like that you want to you want to feel yeah. like he's eating you want to feel like he's eating 10 tiny burgers I all I say is hey no pickles or onions because my kids don't like that when you put pickles and onions you're going out of your way to get my order wrong now because then you have to add an extra step to give me the wrong shit like I, I don't know if they go above and beyond, but I do know fast food is just that fast. Sorry, we're gonna pause. You had something to say, Pete. I didn't yet. Yeah. Did you forget um, it? I no, it's no, it's just when it comes to the fast food service industry, yes, it's not like the best of labor and, and it's yeah. not like five star service. Thank you. Kind of, but <sighs> But it is service. No, wait, no, wait. It's it's bigger than that. Like when you start going to that level, you gotta understand inflation attaches. So if you pay your workers fifteen dollars an hour, there's a chance that they're gonna have to cut employees. There's a chance that the food's gonna have to go up because they gotta cover that cost of paying the employees fifteen dollars and up. And this is just simple economics that I'm talking about. So yes, when you say, Hey, let's let's pay these guys 50 something an hour cool hey just understand that there's going to be repercussions to that okay just like they raised the cost of food during this pandemic you understand like everything's going to explain there's money to be had oh of you, course. you guys are veterans you guys were shot at for peanuts and if you look at it like financially you guys are veterans you guys served our country they didn't, they didn't give you guys technically $15 an hour for what you guys were doing. You guys were not getting paid for the work that you're, you're expending. I don't think you, do. <laughs> you don't. But in, in a fast food restaurant, I get it economically. I totally do. However, people do have a lot of years to get, to get by. I, don't they? Am I wrong? Listen, like I, listen. It's not feasible. It doesn't make sense. But just like they could raise the prices on all of the things around surviving. Food is an essential service. Listen, listen. Here's the thing that 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 you're not realizing here. I it's agree. It's not that I'm realizing it. I Look, acknowledge. Listen, I agree. Everyone should be able to 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 pay their bills. They should. So I wait, do. I just want to know who said it was okay to raise the price of food because Bro, I don't, the I don't know. Of people who are working these jobs have to pay for this exponentially more food. I listen, don't know how. Here's 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 the thing that no one really realizes, right? And we've seen a sign of this with McDonald's. The McDonald's workers were complaining about they want fifteen dollars an hour, and what did McDonald's do? McDonald's said, "Okay, bet we are going yeah, to put in kiosk. In. We're gonna put in kiosk. Yeah. Kiosk. kiosk. I said that. I said that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that point. Not how stupid that was, but they put in a bunch of kiosks and they fired half of their employees. Now it's kind of like, okay, who else is complaining about money? Who else? <laughs> When you have I mean, when you, the subway system, the MTA here did the same thing and so on and so forth. That's where we're moving towards anyway. It's a technology. It's, it's technologically wrong. advanced nation, but they also want to cut costs with teaching people things. You don't got to teach a machine nothing. You just put the, the little disc in, right? You're right. But listen, just like how you said, like I said, I agree. People should be able to afford the cost of living. And I feel like that could be, that could be a uh, ram of, that could be fixed. I've, I've had, I've been drinking too much. I can't use big words anymore. That can be fixed 
by setting laws and setting rules to keep the cost of living at a certain percent or, or alternatively set a rule requiring all employees to get a, a pay raise every year. But to jump people to $15 an hour, you're going to alienate. It's, it your doesn't business. make any sense. Cool. Yeah. Cause then here, here, here's another thing. Here's another thing. Most people don't realize it, but if you raise the, the pay rate that high, a, sto- a place that could, that could afford 15 workers at $5 an hour. Can, they will have can less workers. workers. People will get cut. They will have less business. Business will go elsewhere. McDonald's, we, will, I get it. McDonald's will become less of a, a off the out of high school job to uh, you require a degree job because at that point, if I'm paying you fifteen dollars an hour, bro, I'm gonna require you be a rocket science to flip my burger. Like you have Are to you come out fifteen dollars an hour based upon you will have what? To be. because the food. Like if you want to go get ground beef from the supermarket, it's ridiculously high. Bro, if you just regular, I know when I go to the supermarket here, it, it, I can't go outside. I've spent a hundred dollars, but I don't have one bag of food barely. Let me two words. Me, Farmers market. Nowhere near me because I live in the hood. Let me let me let me let me, let me, let me, let me point something out that none of y'all probably didn't notice. Right. Here's the thing with fast food. Did you realize that it's cheaper to feed your family off of fast food every single day for a week than it is to go and buy three days worth of organic groceries or healthy food in the store? Of course, yes, that's what, yes. That's, yeah. That's, 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 that's all one other thing to talk about. Sorry. That's literally why um, California allows food stamps, and you can you can literally buy fast food with food oh. stamps. Wait, you yeah. can? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. see. That's what I'm saying. It's I don't think things are placed properly. It's like yeah, eat all the hamburgers, and you're going to get all of these health issues, and you still don't have money to go pay the doctor. Yeah, because oh. McDonald's oh. doesn't make chicken nuggets for real meat. <laughs> Bro, look. You know. Go ahead, eat the GMOs because no, you can't afford to eat healthily. But it's, it just doesn't make sense. It's, it's a you can see the agenda off the rip. You really can't to me. Like okay, we're gonna make all this stuff a little bit more, but we're not gonna raise the minimum wage. But somehow you still have to afford to live. Now look, at the end of I the day, I get the look, economics. We do. Mm-hmm. People are gonna look at this and call me and Pete the two biggest heartless douchebags no, in the world, not. and that's fine. But please understand what you're asking for when you say you want fifteen dollars an hour. When you want fifteen dollars an hour, then you have to be ready to give fifteen dollar an hour service because it's not even, look, the pandemic just happened and tons of little businesses closed. I understand where the, the hmm. finances will go, but like, look, just with this quick change. So True. if everything can increase from this pandemic happening at the end of the day. How are these people going to afford whatever has exponentially increased? No, you're right. And they should get a raise. And you know what? Let me add real quick, not even on a, on a fast food tip, like uh, on like food service industry altogether. Everyone bitched and complained and pissed and moaned that they couldn't go out and eat at their favorite restaurants. Now these restaurants are open and these same cats can't tip people. You are going out and you are running people, putting their lives at risk, and you don't even want to tip people. As far as I'm concerned, stay. People cannot. Food is essential. People cannot even pay their rent. So, like, yes, I want the food. Food is essential, but giving you a tip may not be. Okay, but that's the case. If that's the case, then if that's the case, then buy food at home and stay your broke ass at home. But don't come out and put my people's at risk because y'all niggas can't afford to leave a two dollar tip or a five dollar tip because these are the same motherfuckers that will come and buy three hundred dollars worth of liquor and leave two dollars for the poor server that they dragged all goddamn night. Okay, I feel like this is personal. Is this touching you personally? Being being a being a being a bartender and server, yes, I've seen it. And keep my my wife, she's a server, and she goes to work putting herself at risk. And people don't even have the common courtesy to say, "Hey, you know what? We know you don't have to be out here because she's not a center. She could be like, "Hey, you know, I'm going to stay in my house. You don't have to be out here, but we appreciate you and we appreciate your great service. So let me tip you, you know, better than you know, twenty five cents on a three hundred dollar t- uh, tab." Well, I mean, like I said, we understand how the world works, but we also know that things have gotten more expensive. So, yeah, I might want to treat myself and go get some really good food. But I didn't really equate the fact that you're going to make me pay the price of the food as well as the person who's bringing it to me. Maybe I didn't hit that. That's how people think. 
See, but then that's your issue because I feel like even if you even if you're broke and you go out to get food, oh, I think we might have lost E for a second there. Oh, there she go. I feel like if you're broke and you go out to get food, at the very least, keep in mind, hey, you know what shit is more expensive? I only got twenty dollars. <laughs> Maybe I get a fifteen dollar meal. No, I definitely understand where you're coming from, but that's how humans think. Speaking, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna. I just was gonna say if I mean. In that case, yeah, if you're going to go out to eat, understand that your server is out there putting their yeah. life on the line for you. If, you're, if, if that's not where you, your ends meet, like your ends is pretty Then we're doing it. Just get it to go. I don't, I don't usually tip when I'm getting it to go because yeah. I can't even get it. Right. So, okay. I'm with it. Since we're speaking on ends and going out to eat, let me ask y'all a question here. I've been seeing a lot of these videos <laughs> where guys will take girls out to eat and they'll be like, um, so look, we're going to split this. And on two specific videos, girls are like, oh, you must want to be friend zoned. And the dude was like, so because I say we should split this, I got to be friend zoned. Where do you guys stand on that? Do you think if a guy makes a girl split his meal, he should be friend zoned? No. First of all, I don't think that that means anything about a friend zone. I don't understand how people equate these things. Like, well, hold on. Did he invite you out to eat? On one of the, and on one of them, he did invite her out <laughs> to eat. Now, hold on. Before you comment, I will let you know. I do feel like personally, if I invite anyone out to eat, it is my job to at least be ready to pay for them. Precisely. Okay. Now, I'm going to move forward from there because no matter what, I don't mind paying for myself. No, that does not mean an individual is friend zoned. I don't understand how those two things equate at all. What about you, Pete? First off, I don't believe in friend zone. Okay. Uh, friends two. do still smash. Oh. Friends do still smash. Oh, yeah. I do believe that. I'm just saying I don't believe in that concept. We place ourselves in friend zone. But I will say this. Um, depending on the type of relationship, yes, it depends. Um, okay. If I if I'm just your friend and I offer okay. to come out to eat, yes, I'm paying. Um, but um, I'll let you know if I don't have you. I'm like, hey, we going? Oh, back. I'm gonna let you know before rip. Like I'm not gonna set you up. Like I'll be setting you up for failure after we eat. Like yo, you got you. Hey, hey, that's, Pete, that's failure. This is your face. Pete, I want you to know if we ever go out to dinner. I'm going to be like, bro, I got to use the bathroom real quick. And I'm going to call you from the car, laugh my ass, like, yeah, Yo, you bro, got this, right? Go, bro, trust me. I, the you say after you eat, you got to go to the bathroom. I'm, I'm literally waiting. The moment after you leave, just leave. I'll just leave it. I'm, 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 I'm going to come like, son of a right bitch, you got me. What? I will leave the bill right on the table. I'm like, I will leave. I, hey, he, okay. he, he, he dress through. I'll be right back. <laughs> I got to go to the car real That's quick. That's still with that. <laughs> No, I'll, what do you, I'll what call you, a bird donut <laughs> outside. Uh, leave. Yeah. Nah. You say you don't believe in the friend zone, like the concept of friend zone. No, I think the concept is it, it, it's a, it's a self it's a self thing. You you put yourself like yeah, it's something that you do because you you have hopes. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you ask, like if you ask the girl or the guy, whoever you're looking for, you ask them, and then they say, "Nah, okay." Uh -huh. uh, at that point, you have to make a choice. Do you accept your role? Do you leave? Do you continue to pursue? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's. I think it's a. It's it's a thing that I guess it's a concept that everybody agrees on, but I don't accept it as a concept. Nah. I am with you. It's not funny. I'm really with you with that because it's just like the word friend zone is based on the emotions that you have for the person like so like you're liking the person they may not ne have never seen you that way so they're just interacting with you how they normally would and then all of a sudden i feel like i'm in the friend zone now you just had expectations and that's they were for fool as far <laughs> as i'm concerned i agree with you friend zone don't mean nothing i've had girls been like all right you friend zone and i'd be like i still ain't gonna stop nothing it's, yeah. it's, it's still going down what? You go. It's still you going. Have like, benefits. <laughs> you accept rejection well, do you? I know, I accept yeah. rejection very well, and I'd be fine if somebody was like, "Hey, bro, you, you ain't you ain't it." Cool. I'm I'm teasing you, Dex. I'm just cool. teasing you, bro. 
I just got to feel when you say when you say, especially when you say you're you're in a friend zone because you're not paying for my meal. Yeah, that, I don't get that. First Pete of all, it, Pete said the other day, and I and I love it. In fact, I want you to repeat that. He was saying something about um, it's the it's the it's the standard you're setting. Oh, I yeah. can see well, that. Yeah, like you set the standard. Like you you've already set your stuff. Okay, so you're expecting this, this, and this. All right, bet. There's a problem. There's a high probability that I'm not it. I'm sorry. Cool. I'm cool <laughs> with that. And understand that setting your standard is it's okay. It's okay. You know that's a personal choice. But also understand that the probability, <laughs> the probability of you finding that standard, somebody meeting that standard is existent. Here, yeah, what I don't think anyone ever thought about, right? If we go out to right. dinner, right, and you tell me, oh, you friend zone. I'm gonna be like, oh, that's crazy because I drove and it's up my other friends just called. So I'm gonna I'm head out. Go, go, look. You, you will find your own way home, right? Because we, we friends. <laughs> I'm not obligated. We just friends. Oh, we, we got Uber now. I'm, yeah, but if you can't afford to pay for your meal, this dollars, dollars for donuts, you, <laughs> you ain't getting home. <laughs> we'll pay for ride. I mean, We'll do some nasty things for a ride. Go, I'm like going only fans in 15 minutes. A little bit of change. Hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get on, I'm trying to get an Uber home. Here's my titty. Uh, only fans me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm done. I'm done. But no, no, no. I will tell you though, I kind of feel like if you're going to, and this is my personal opinion, this is the last thing I'm going to say on this. If you're going to friend zone somebody, Friend zone them for other reasons, not because they won't pay for your meal. But again, I do feel like, and this goes for guys and females, if you call somebody and invite them out, you better be ready to pay for their meal. Even if you don't, at least keep it in your mind that, yo, I invited this dude or this girl out from the comfort of their home. So that you know? means you do feel like friend zone is an actual thing. No, because I, I feel the person who said that they were friend zone is the person that perpetuates that because they're the ones with feelings. No, I feel like I feel like oh, I, I kind of feel like, though, honestly, if we can't be friends regardless of of meals or not, then we can't be anything else. Oh, no, facts. That's definitely no, definitely facts. Period. No, that that, that but, friends though, shouldn't exist. Either we friends or we're not. Not facts. Yeah, not, if we're not friends. I was clarifying for myself. Yeah, if we're not <laughs> friends, fine. I'm, I'm that Gucci. We all good. We all, all right. good. But but don't try to change your mind, you know, 10 years down the line when I'm running Microsoft. No, understand this. Like. It's a, it's a, it's a universal concept. We all are, when you hear rental, you understand what it is. Yeah. I just choose to not acknowledge it. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Pete. So earlier this week, you were telling me that, you know, this whole uh, resale culture is starting to get under your skin. Please elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, it it trickled it first started with stuff like ebay ebay is one of the the main the main places yeah places, places. complications you you can see this on and it dwindled it, it trickled down into places like stock x Yes. Um, and whatnot. And now, Bro, don't get it twisted. I, I shop on, on StockX. Hold on. Let me, let me, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just real quick. Since you mentioned StockX. Bro, the disrespect about StockX. Let me tell, let me tell you something. I was watching Paranorman the other night with my old lady. And I was like, oh man, you know what I just remembered? I want them Paranorman phone posits. And she was like, I don't know what that is. So I pulled it up for her and I showed her. She was like, so why don't you get them? I was like, do you like not 8, see the price? It was yeah between four to eight thousand yeah. dollars, and the price tag is attributed because they only made about eight hundred pairs of them, and you couldn't buy them in stores. You had to win them off of um, uh, a contest. Mm-hmm. So essentially, what StockX did is they found the winners and bought multiple pairs. Now they're hoarding them and selling them at outrageous prices. Yeah, that I feel like is 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 ridiculous. But see that that's 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 been the nature of the resale value of the resale culture. It's despicable. Um, there was a TED talk um, a few years ago, uh, and the guy came on and he was talking about. First off, he came on with the with the what you call it the black cements, 
uh, Jordan Force, Black Cement. At that time, they were retailing at ten thousand off of rip. Now, there's a lot of things you got to factor in, like reselling shoes. Like shoes only have like a, a life, a shelf life of like ten years. After that, they start breaking down, literally. And uh, especially if you don't, if you don't. Yeah, yeah, they start falling apart. Um, that's why I almost after a certain while, Nike will bring back special ones. Like they just brought back the black cement year before last. Okay. So right now, on Stock X, I want to say black cements are going for about four or five hundred dollars, give or take. Hundred. Yeah, five hundred. Oh. I could deal with that. It's the eighteen thousands and things on StockX. I'm like, um, I can't afford. It. <laughs> well, yeah, you gotta, you, you gotta factor like these things like, and Nike and they know they know this. So what Nike will do is special shoes. They only make certain pairs, so many numbers yeah. of pairs. And this is why Yeezys, why Yeezy is easy. They would only make a certain amount, and they sell out. And then he already gets his cut. Now the resale goes up. So shoes that went for like two is Yeezys the retail go for about two thirty, two forty. They'll sell from there and it'll go anywhere from like three to six hundred, depending mm-hmm. on which ones. Cause some of them Jesus. And then so how do you feel like this affects our pockets though? Like or even just on the economy, not even the economy, the resale culture. The retail culture. How do you think that affects it? I think that's what I wanted to ask. The retail culture? How does it affect the resale culture? Well, the retail culture, how does that affect the retail culture? Well, they work hand in hand. Look at look at um Virgil, if you know Virgil off white, he's weird, but he's a really nice designer. He his made, name is his last name is off white? No, his Virgil is like a blow or something like that. Oh, because I know his his brand is off white, but I never knew like. But anyway, continue. So he made these um, off white Jordan fours. They were beautiful. They were like a nude, and they went for about two hundred. They mm-hmm. sold almost instantaneously, mm. and now they're about a grand. Oh, Listen, what you're touching on, I understand your your aggravation, and I agree with you. It's crazy that people would buy something and resell it for. For an outrageous price, but at the end I mean, of the I don't day, think it's that far. It's not. At the end of the day, some people see it as a come up, and believe it's it. Or not, exactly. Believe it or not, it is a part of commerce. Um, I don't know it if you've is. ever noticed during uh, storms and 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 stuff like that. A lot of places will raise the price of their water to outrageous prices. Yeah. Do you know there why? Pandemic. But hold on, just, hold, on, hold on, no, 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 no. Believe it or not, price gouging is 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 wrong. But at the same time, it's good for the economy. I don't know if you ever noticed that, or for yeah. the people. Because I want you to consider something. Say you have a pallet of water, right? And you're selling that pallet for a dollar a piece. I mean, I'm sorry, the pallet, the water for a dollar a piece, right? You're gonna have one person who can afford to buy all of it, come and buy the entire pallet out. Because that's what they do. By raising the price, you're ensuring that one person cannot purchase everything at once and that other people can. The only problem is you're setting up to where those who absolutely cannot afford it will not afford it. It's kind of a double-edged sword. It's a bite in the ass, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, I get that. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's a necessary evil. So why because it's it, where the demand is. You're right. So why does it bother you so much, Pete? Over Sorry, here. Pete. Yo, he, yo, he, he, he over here looking like like like, like one eye Willie from the Simpsons, the, 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 the sea captain. <laughs> it's an irritating, necessary evil. You said it a few times. Necessary, um, the lesser evil. It, it 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 bothers me a little bit. That's all right. Sorry. But, um, it's more of, a, it's more of an ethical reason why I don't like it because, um. If you could buy for one, if you could buy for a dollar, sell for two, I understand. But hiking the price 100, 200, almost 500 percent of its original price, that's is that's ethically unsound. That's ethically immoral. It's it's crazy. However, 
There we go. Uh, look at it. Look at it like a coin collection because people do have sneaker collections and and hold it to the value as like a coin collection, something that's very very hard to find. So like, of course, if it's if it's um, what's the word I'm thinking? Like yeah. a vintage, vintage rare. Something is rare and vintage. They don't even make it anymore because it's just sneakers that my mom made me throw away, and I love them. There was some like like this midnight purple, and I cannot find them to this day. I understand it, but if there's something that's out there that's rare like that, wouldn't you up the price? Isn't that how it works? Because, I mean, people pay thousands of dollars for freaking old coins. See, yeah, but but see, but here's the thing with that. When you're talking about old coins and stuff like that, you're talking about they made a total of like seven or they made a total of a hundred and only like two exist left in the world. That's rare. Like like I said, I would still like to find the sneaker. They don't make it anymore. And I even call it for it. Nothing. They were like, well, what does it look like? This and a third. But if I had someone there, I could find them because I've been looking. I might spend an extra coin for it because I love those sneakers. Those then are my back. Then you know what would make more sense? Auctioning them rather than just gouging the price. Wait, what did you say? It make more sense to just auction these things rather than gouging the price. Now, when you have someone that says, okay, okay. I see what I, you're talking about. Yeah, I'm willing to pay this and I'm willing to go up because I want these that bad is one thing. When you're saying, okay, we have 15 of these sneakers and they're all $8,000, then you're ensuring that maybe the person who cannot afford it but really, really wants a pair, now he can never get that. Now only the, 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 the top tier of individual that has $8,000 to throw away can go purchase these shoes. And no, more I mean, so, I really, no, I understand where you're coming from. That's what I'm saying. But Pete started out with eBay. Now, this is going to be really random, but I have a Tigger cup, a mug. Okay. I went to sleep, woke up at freaking three o'clock in the morning just for this cup on an auction. The amount that I paid for it is not what it's worth. I paid way more, but it's because I wanted it. eBay will, will exponentially increase the price. So if you have something like a sneaker that can make it to something like $18,000, it will happen. Cause that's what you know. You're trying to make a profit off of something. That's how people are. We're we're doing what happened, Pete. Yeah, but with eBay, you don't. With eBay, you can set a high price. People don't have to bid that high price. That was the start. No, no, no. But once you start bidding, if you really want that, it's gonna get up there. Yeah. No, no. I get that. I get that. But it's better. It's better that than somebody says, okay, you can start for a dollar or seven hundred dollars. What? Just give me seven hundred dollars for it. At least you have a you have a choice. No, because I, I sell on eBay every now and again, and I've sold and bought sneakers on eBay. Um, right. Remember when um, Air Force Ones had the five burrow pack? Oh, yeah. So I had the Queens Borough ones. Yeah. I had them, and I sold them. I bought them for about $195, and mm-hmm. I ended up selling them for about 230 Listen, I feel you. It wasn't it a little bit of a come up? I needed the money. Esther, uh, Pete will do a lot for money. In fact, look out for his OnlyFans. Oh, my God. I know you can say some shit. At, at FatDaddyOnlyFans.com. <laughs> oh, my God. No, because I used to sell on eBay, too, and I get it. And for me, that was a little bit of a drug when I was in college. Juicy Couture charms were popping at the time, like the little bracelets. And then I would see these super rare ones, and I was like, oh, my God, $500. So I had a, I'll them on the mall next door. So I will go right to the mall to the Juicy Couture store and put those things right on eBay. And it can be a come up. Is it fair? No, all the time. But people took the price to where they took it at. I sold one for like 500 bucks. It was great in college. We want money. Like, for example, um, just a few years ago, um, I needed some money for rent. And mm-hmm. it was really bad. So I sold my Mega Man X collection. So there was, okay, so I'm going I'm to I'm explain. There was this um, collector's uh, piece called True Force, and yeah. they, they, they were circulating the idea of making these toys, and they finally made them, and I had all of them. I even had the, the Kickstarter gray version one, and I ended up selling all four of them for about like 800 bucks. And I paid maybe, for everything, I paid maybe 600 Jesus Christ. Paid a lot more than I would have. Oh. Now I want them all back, but... I mean, understand, Pete, I understand that, that you have an issue with the resale culture, that they're gouging the shit out of people for their own benefit. But a come-up is a come-up, my friend. 
I mean, we all saw we all saw the uh, the the OnlyFans and the homemade porn shoot up during the during the COVID thing. When people want to make money, they're gonna make money. And at the end of the day, as much as we might not agree, we can't knock their hustle. Thanks. And that's why I made my my point on Facebook. Unlike just like chivalry, integrity died with our our era. We lost integrity. First of all, I'm gonna stop you there. Our era, my ass. I know plenty of niggas that don't got no integrity from our age. Okay, integrity died hundreds of years ago. People, We're I talking said, like generationally. I know within every generation there are the anomalies, but come on, son, stop being mad. Why you gotta be difficult? No, I said last week, kids is low key trash and people are high key trash. Okay, niggas is trash. So yeah, since we're talking about culture. How about we talk about cancel culture? Like, canceling Pete. That ass. Who are you canceling, Pete? Like, if you cancel me, I will find you. Oh, I'll I, do that for him. I'll cancel you right for now. For me? I cancel the whole Milky Way. Screw it. Let's do like the engineers did at Prometheus to start over because. So you just trying to fuck all of us because you know we're. Yeah, because Earth is trash, low key. Bro, see, I told you. I did. I'm with the shits. I am with the shits. It is trash. But yeah, when you I said. Tell me what. Like literally, you know our, our our planet's name after dirt. Like, yeah, just 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 go to the moon and start over. Screw it. Yeah, just just wipe his wipe his okay. clean and just start over. So what no. what about cancel culture bothers you? The fact that it's not a thing. No, it's a thing. Oh, or excuse me, hold on, hold oh, on, hold on, wait. Or the fact that it shouldn't be a thing. I misspoke. It shouldn't be. It should have never been something we we gave energy to. Think of council culture as a mob mentality. Okay. Let me simplify. So you're going to um, extort people until they just can't stop. Um, no, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's bullying. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bullying. bullying. It's bullying on on an, on a on a a crowdfunding event. I guess. No, no it's I think not, of crowdfunding, but it was bullying. Listen. But don't you but no no go ahead I'm sorry go ahead no but don't don't you feel like it's one of those cultures where it's like people just want to jump on the bandwagon based on whom started the cancel culture not based on their own feelings if anything that's where I have an issue with cancel culture now listen I feel like cancel culture is absolutely a thing and it should be a thing but it's being used for the wrong reasons. Misused, definitely. People are canceling motherfuckers just to hear them apologize, just to turn around and say that apology wasn't good enough. That apology wasn't good enough. <laughs> Shut up, I've been drinking. I, on the other hand, don't apologize for shit. If I said what I said, then I meant what I said. And you're not going to bully me into feeling bad. You don't want to mess with me, then don't mess with me. But don't, don't sit down and be like, huh? See how that worked? Go ahead, Pete. <laughs> No, I, I think I think he's he's right. <laughs> Dex is right, but this I don't think it should be a thing. I think it's one of those things conceptually, it's a great idea, but just as everything humans touch, we, we touch it and turn it up. So the problem I have with council culture is there's no room for error. Um I don't know if y'all heard about the story about this dude, this college dude, he, he had made a sign saying, you know, you need money for beer. And <clears throat> I think it was Bush Beer. They sent him like, they, they matched like stupid money for him. And he was like, I'm going to give it to the, I'm going to give it to a, a hospital or whatever. And they matched it, whatever. And um, some reporter thought it was a great idea to dig up, you know, a little bit of his history and he had made some racist remarks and he had said he was sorry for him, but, um, the beer company said, you know, we don't endorse him or nothing, but we're still donating to the church. I mean, the school or whatever. And then <clears throat> I don't know if y'all know what doxing is. It's basically, um, looking you up and then just releasing all your stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, it's dangerous. But um, some people decided to do the same thing to the reporter, and the reporter ended up losing his job. Okay. I, I see where you're coming from. I think 
cancel culture is necessary it's the way it's being used is where the issue is and also leaves it, it narrows and re, it kind of eradicates the the level of for error making any error in one's life i feel like the way cancel culture is used is okay. it's where it's fucked up because it's like okay i may i fucked up when i was a teenager or i messed up when i was in college because like that's what college students do and people won't let you move on from it so kind of the same thing as like if you were ever a stripper, you were never supposed to be respected in life at all. That's how society deems it. But that's a level of cancel culture as well. Yeah. I feel like cancel culture needs to be used for those who are negatively affecting other people on a on a magnitude scale. That's what I feel. Not based like triage. Like somebody. That's like I'm in high school. That sounds but, like triage. That's literally triage. <laughs> Listen, listen, let me think. What's that. That, bro? Cancel culture. My, my biggest problem with cancel culture is, like you said, they, they, they dive into your past in the most extreme ways. Like Dave Chappelle, the dude is like, fuck cancel culture. They don't bother me. I don't care. I'm not going to, like, I apologize, but it is what it is. Because. Is that cancel culture? But guess what happened? He had said some stuff. They go look through your past for something. Yeah, and, yeah he's, uh, and then they'd be like, oh, cancel him because he said he used the yeah. word fag, you know, 20 years ago. It's kind of like, bro. Okay. Well, if you're talking I said about it, like, going to find dirt on people that's yeah. different, you fucked up right now. And yeah, it's, like, it's really, did you not apologize for this? Yeah, I'm gonna, like, so you don't need to make money in this business. And, and oh. it's, it's, it's kind of like they, they, they're looking for a reason. To, to, to halt your hustle. They're trying to stop your success, you know? And that's why Dave Chappelle's dude, he's like, yes, I made mistakes in the past. I apologize. Get over it. I'm not going to keep apologizing for this. Kevin Hart did the same thing. He was like, look, I apologized once. I'm not going to keep doing this. I said I was sorry. I was, it was back in the day. I was young. I made mistakes. But who doesn't make mistakes? <clears throat> and to hold me accountable 15 years down the line, now that I've grown and matured, is messed up on many, many levels. I'm pretty sure I've said some shit on this show that somebody's going to look at me and be like, oh my God, he just said that. And I'm like, yes, I did. I said it and it is what it is. I apologize right. if it offended you, but it was, it was right. in the I'm, past. Let me, let me ask y'all a question. Yes. No, and, Pete. I um, let you Trevor, Noah, Trevor Noah. I love Trevor Noah. He's, he's, me he's, too. But he's, he, he asked this question. Okay. So remember the, the Laker, the, the Clippers owner who kind of got ousted? Yes. yes. So his question was, okay, we just identified a racist. After we oust him, what's next? Do we, Ooh, you know, do we I really like, made a person think, hold on. Do we like, do we just continue ousting him? Do we help him get training? Does, or does it just disappear? Or, you know? Is the individual acknowledging why he's being ousted? Because a person needs to work on themselves, too. Yeah. But us ousting him, does that help? No, that's just like throwing our black men in jail and not doing nothing. That doesn't help either. You feel me? <laughs> And that's what I said. If you're not going to do anything to help make that person better, if they're not going to learn anything, go through any type of therapy while they're inside, what's the point? That's what I said. I get it. Okay. I see where you're going. Um, yeah. Cancel culture is trash. See? Look at this. It makes no sense if you're not going to follow through with it. Because it's like telling somebody to go to rehab and then once they get out, they're supposed to be perfect. And that's not the case. They have to go through constant you know, readjusting, acknowledgement, et cetera, to, in order for, for rehab to work. Exactly. Like, I don't apologize for nothing I did. I did it of sound mind and body. For me, a reason. Exactly. For me, for me to say sorry would to be to minimize that and to minimize who I am as a person. Nah, I ain't sorry for Jack. Here's my thing. Hey. I, here's my thing. I feel like a lot of the times when they pull stuff from, from on the past, they take it out of into into a weird context if that makes sense. Because mind you, back in the days when we were growing up, we would use certain words and it wouldn't necessarily be seen as hateful towards a certain group or towards anyone in particular. But now that it's evolved into that, all of a sudden it's okay, well, you said it. Yeah, but when I said it, it wasn't offensive. Well, it's offensive now. I get that. But when I said it, 
It wasn't offensive. It wasn't, a, it wasn't even a problem. You know what? I, here's how I equate that. If, if 20 years ago, it was okay to eat beef, right? And then all of a sudden, cows became endangered and they outlawed beef. Can and you, all of a sudden, it's wrong. Yeah, you pulled you pull a picture of me 20 years ago. He was eating steak. Yeah. Well, is that retroactive now? Like, wait, wait. We got, <laughs> exactly. That's, about, that's my point exactly. Like, it's like we're going out of our way to do stupid stuff. Nah, screw that. I feel like people are taking their anger out, um, like, you know, redirecting their anger. Yeah, that's what I think that's what cancel culture is, because for all of that, we could cancel the government. I don't hold on. I don't I don't think it's, I don't think it's a redirection of anger. I feel like I feel like it's an ability. It's, it's kind of like it's kind of like people are, get a superpower and it's absolutely well, power what corrupts. It's because you have direct connection to someone. And that, they that's can what I'm saying. Carry out- Bro, don't get me started on social media and the toxicity it brings into people's life. Completely off of that note, how much would you do to feel whole or to make your family feel whole? What would you do to have a child? We, how we, far would you go? To have a child? Not to, okay, mm-hmm. to have a child. Uh, are we talking legality here? Like, is, is, is kidnapping no, an option? I just don't know how far you would go to have a child because I know you feel... Like children ain't shit. <laughs> Hold on, no, listen. Children ain't shit. I love children though. I do. But exactly. Just, so how much would you go to have a child, Pete? Like what would you go through? Through what, you know, avenues would you go just to make sure that you are a parent? You're able to, you know, share Hold your knowledge. Hold on. How how much do we want this child? More than anything. More than you anything. Want to be a parent. You want to be a parent. Is kidnapping illegal? Of course. Oh, dude. Then, yeah, shit. I don't. You know, I, I just want you to know that um, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm basically immoral. Just want you to know that. So okay. I would do just about anything. Why was that a turn on for me, though? Like, <laughs> he's like, I don't give no fucks, and I know this. I'm just own it, motherfucker. Yes. As, lo- as long as our toxicities come into the front street and we can accept that, <laughs> then we're good to go. We don't need counseling if we know our issues and we can accept them. <laughs> no, because there were these penguins. It was two male, they're gay penguins, okay? And they want to have a... Fi- okay, penguins... Anyway, I'm going to go through the story. So these two gay penguins, they really wanted to have a family together. So they stole a lesbian cu- couple's egg and tried to, you know, make it um, hatch. It didn't work. And it, the long story short is they've done this multiple times because they want to be the parents of a baby penguin. Because what? Real quick. Sorry to interrupt, but I feel like Jacoby just posted uh, that story. In fact, Jacoby posted a follow-up to that. Apparently, those two gay penguins stole the lesbian penguin's nest, too, because they're all the way gangster. Yeah, no, they, done, they did everything. Everything, yeah. everything. Just so, they could, first- so everyone might be wondering, how is it that a penguin or could be gay? Because homosexuality is so wrong, but penguins are monogamous. Hold on. Hey, that's how society makes it. You know that yeah. everything is so wrong, but that what's up, bro? Real quick, I'm sorry. Just people misunderstand that the term gay and straight are human. We we made those. Terms. Yeah, we. In those categories, categories, so our stupid asses could understand nothing. Yes, yeah, it, that's what we did. It was. It's a natural. Like sexuality is natural. It's a fluid thing. It is what it is. Exactly. Yeah. You and love. I digress. Love. You were yeah. saying about the, uh, the but penguins penguin. are monogamous, so they find their life partner and literally go through the entirety of life with them. So there is a lesbian couple, and there was a gay couple of penguins at a zoo, and the penguins kept the gay penguins kept stealing the lesbian penguins, but. Of course, you have to have a male and a female, the male to fertilize the egg. So the egg never hatched. So that's what I'm saying. Even an egg. What's up, bro? That's crazy. Yeah, yo. Even at the zoo. That's crazy. No, but you know, I love oh, that. Wait, because- wait, hang on. Hold on. I have a very important question. Everyone needs to. Is there a masculine <laughs> and a feminine penguin on the bunch? Like, how does this work? I'm, I'm curious. That what? Is there like a masculine and a feminine penguin or like. A- no. Uh, is there a picture and a catcher? Oh, <laughs> oh. I, you know, I didn't even go that like, far. How do, how do 
how do penguins even like how do two oh. it's it's weird like do they like woke up and quack 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 like okay. how does this work i'm curious you love who you love clearly they were genetically born to what's up pete be attracted to whomever they want it to be what's up bro <laughs> this is beautiful I, I have to say this is this is one of the most beautiful topics you've brought up this is beautiful because <laughs> That's crazy to just have thought about, like, even animals. They just want to fucking live. Can we live? Can we love? You and, see what I'm saying, sis? So, so. And Dex, I told you about this. The universal truth is to fight for existence. I told you that. Pete, I know you, fucking me. Pete, I know you told me that, but like I said, I wasn't ready. My safe word was pineapple. It was not the right time. Are you ready now? No, no I, I my, wife, my wife won't accept that. I find that highly fascinating. That that's fascinating. I thought it was gnarly. Other species to be queer. You, you, that's what they say. You know, you got mm-hmm. cool penguins. Well, that's the word that we put to it as humans. But it's like you love who you love, man. Can I ask you a quick question? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I need to know. Seriously, I've never. I've always wondered: Is queer okay to say though? Like, can can like yeah. a straight person say queer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, queer is cool. I didn't know that. It just sounds, it sounds so weird to me to say like, hey, he's, he's queer. It, just, it, sounds, it sounds weird. I, I've never said oh, it. There was a whole show about it. Queer as folk. Pretty good yeah, show. But I d- love that show. What? Throwback. Oh my God. I don't First that of all, it's kind of it's like bitch. I can't go be like, hey, bitch. But a girl could be like, look at that you bitch. You saw like, my face. Okay. Face, right? Yeah, exactly. That's I thought it was like that. I didn't know. Like, I was curious. I mean, no, you can say queer it's, well towards things. You're gonna call someone queer, they should fit that paradigm. But wouldn't there need to be a they fr- don't fit any paradigm? Well, hold on. Shouldn't there be a, a familiar fil- 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 shouldn't you have some kind of rapport relationship with them? Yeah, because I like I like example, I can't walk up to a guy and be like, Hey, you're queer, right? Like that wouldn't be cool. No. That's no. what I'm saying. So yeah, you no, have, to no. have some kind you, of rapport between the two. Five things. I'm you sorry? can to describe things but no you shouldn't just go up to a person and say that but it is way better than just going up to somebody and be like are you a dyke are you a fag those that's inappropriate okay that will get your teeth stomped in yeah hey, yes yeah, so matter of fact unless you ask it for a cigarette in england the word fag is it's uh, yeah, yeah i'm gonna that that be- yeah. back to this the penguins okay love is love they wanted to have a family to feel complete because to them that egg was a level of completion to their family. They kept stealing the lesbian ones. Egg. I thought that that was funny, though. Okay, that was I thought it was funny. As far as I'm concerned, them penguins are thugs, okay? They're, th- they're, thugs, they're thugs, but they thugs. have love to give. I, I've, seen, I've seen a few uh, BBC uh, shows where a dude go out to <laughs> bring food and come back. There'd be a whole other dude in the desk like, yo, um, like, Pete, yo. Pete. I need you to choose your words better with the conversation you have me like I've seen a few BBCs. You, I'm gonna need you to wait. Oh, I'm oh, a BBC. I can't yeah, say BBC. I mean the <laughs> so the uh, <laughs> or whatever. I said, did I say BBC for real? You, you, you've seen a few BBCs, Pete. <laughs> Are you talking about <laughs> big people? Time big- out. Pause. Pause. Yeah, because it could be something else too. All right. I would need you to be careful. No. <laughs> Big buttery croissants. For the record, I would like to say that I met BBC as the channel, not the Oh, the channel. The British yeah. channel, the news channel, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure he edits officially. I will not edit that. That will be all up in there. <laughs> He's not editing that, but that's all right. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with my sexuality. In I'm fact, that's going in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward. You know what? Now is a good time to jump topics. So, so, so do we have any Game of Thrones fans here? So that would mean that we are all uh, familiar with a trial by fire. Well, I've seen in the news that a man who was who felt like his 
his wife's divorce attorney gave him so much headache. He wanted to prove how absurd it was. So he asked for something just as, just as absurd from the judge. This gentleman asked, he requested to have a trial by combat with his wife for the divorce with swords. And his caveat was, your honor, I would like a month to try to acquire a samurai sword for, <laughs> for this trial. Like he wanted an actual katana. Yes, he wanted a katana. And might I say, I endorse, I endorse this. He is, right. he is absolutely right. I, I also endorse that. I feel like the judge should have gave, he should have granted that one and let them either fight themselves or choose a champion. Have you given up the story? I want to hear the story. So this gentleman asked for to, to fight with his a, wife. A trial by combat. But he wants to fight with his wife. But why though? What made this okay? Because because apparently her divorce attorney was asking such like ridiculous for such ridiculous things. Which by were the there children involved or anything? Because like, what did she do? It doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. His point was that the the lawyer is ad because you have to understand. Sometimes when it comes to divorce, some some oppos opposing sides or some of the uh, lawyers can get petty. They'll ask you for social media passwords, you know, letters from 17 years ago, a love letter that your ex wrote you when you were four. They asked some ridiculous things. And I guess he was like, no, nah, if you're going to ask for observed and crazy things, I'm going to ask them just as crazy. So he asked for a duel to the death. And I, what I, are you thinking? I co-sign. I co-sign. I feel like we should start, we should start handling most of our disputes by duels to the death. Either we fight or you choose your champion. What do you think of Pete? Oh, I, I endorse this 110%. I think this is, this is, this is beautiful. Like for one, I was just talking to one of my army buddies, like swords have become these novel things. We should use swords. Like I, I, I truly 100% endorse this. I think this is a beautiful idea. You guys would do that. No, I'm with you because I feel like it's super easy to pull a trigger. But if you really had to feel yeah. what it was to interact or have beef with somebody, you probably won't. But go ahead, Quarters, let me tell you something. Esther feels that way because she lives with a giant. And she knows when it's time to name her champion, she has multiple champions to name. Oh, so she you got must a, not know me. She got a you real she has a harem. She could be like, oh, she could have 18 fights to the death at one time and not have to worry about it. All yeah. right. Look. That's all you need to know. Because here's, I, why, <laughs> here's why I endorse it. And I'm, and I'm going to hit you with facts, okay? Cold, hard facts. First of all, it creates jobs. You got, you got trainers. I'm going to walk got, away now. Bye. No, for you, you got to walk You got metal workers. You got... You got the clean, the, 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 the Coliseum builders, you know, to hell with the wall. You got to build a Coliseum. You have the cleaners who got to clean the Coliseum when, and the dungeons. Imagine people want to pay for that. Exactly. But again, look at the economy. People are going to be buying tickets to watch this. You know, you're, you're, you're creating jobs. You're, cre you're, you're generating revenue. More importantly, more importantly, we're going to clear a bunch of ancient niggas out of the world. Yes. So you're trying to say it's appropriate? I feel like it's necessary. I want you to consider something. People will think twice before disrespecting you and your old lady when they know that you could slap okay. them in the face with a glove and challenge them to a duel to the death with swords at three o'clock. I'm you with it. No, I'm with it. Think of it like a culling of sorts. Okay. Culling of riffraff. Bro, there would be, <laughs> lot, there would be a lot <laughs> less robberies. Cool. There'd be a lot less, a lot less ridiculousness. Oh, this, he called me a bitch on Instagram? Bet. I challenge you to a trial by... Okay, beyond this duel, because I see you're going really, really far and hard and long. Pause. Yeah, um, that's what she said. <laughs> on the sword thing, like, what was the extent? What was going on? Like, did he kill... Like, did he want to kill her? Because he said no, child he, like that. You're talking about Game of Thrones, bro. bro. He didn't, he didn't want to kill her. <laughs> he just wanted to... to ex how can I say it? He wanted to express or show them that he can get as petty as they're getting 
it was just a level of petty. Like, this is how petty they're going to get. I feel like there were children involved or she had to do something to get to this extent. My of, cousin, like, it's not even malice to let someone know, like, I don't mind if you die today. You know, that kind of thing. My cousin did say a woman scorned is a woman scorned. You get what you get. I think at some point he was like, you know what? I'm sick of this bitch. I'm just going to ask for the most ridiculous shit I can just to prove a point. Okay, and well, not with it. No, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm on the same side. Even though I would like, I wouldn't like the details. She had to do something, man. No, I don't <laughs> know. I don't care. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if the actual lawyer had to be the one to defend her honor? I bet you the lawyer would move different. That now, would be gotta- hilarious. The hammer. I-, I love hammers. I love hammers. Okay, Thor. Listen, as long as you can defend this honor, we on deck, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I feel like... You I'm like hammers? <laughs> That's not Is there any pauses in there? He, no, there's he, no, he, no he pauses. He likes, <laughs> you like, like, ha- you like, like hammers, huh? So, so you're saying you, you like how they feel in your hand? I'm gonna need you to stop. That's why I was asking him because I, I was trying to help. First of all, you him. gave him ample opportunity to fix that, and he chose not. I to did. Stop. I was trying to help you. When I when I say ha- I keep, I keep thinking like an axe hammer ish. I was thinking tools. I was I was thinking low. Okay. I, was, I was thinking. I was thinking. You X- like to use X- your and Cindy's, and I'm just like, wait, what? No. <laughs> Ew, pause, man. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. <laughs> hey, Pete. Oh my God. Dude, what is that? That's is a- that a tomahawk? No, that's no. a that, That's a or modified a- military grade hammer. Oh, right? oh, wait, go, go, nigga. Hey, no, that, that's not oh, a regular ass. Out. I bought that at Home Depot. You bought that at the surplus store. Get out of here. Well, whatever, I bought Ooh. it. So let's let's stick Be with called. that. Big call on your shit. That's okay. If I could, I would have kept my E tool too, but that thing's expensive as hell. I think I have one of those. Right. I had, I had a, a, I had a had tomahawk. A, I had to pay like 180 bucks just to just to get a new one, just to turn it into CIF. You play. <laughs> but listen, long story short, I absolutely endorse trial by combat. I think yes. it should be a way of life. Yes. I feel like I feel like it will stop a lot of this bitch assness. I feel like a lot of people will learn how to have conversations. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sick of your shit, trial by combat. Well, you know what? I think we should talk this out, brother. <laughs> I feel like I was a, I was a little haste when when I just said what I just said. I feel <laughs> like I feel like we could handle this like men. I, I think chicks would truly dig scars now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you got a scar? You gonna protect me? Ew! I'd be like, that oh, this, this no, that, that chicken head thing. It's, it's one of these. Oh, this this dude has he has multiple scars. He must he he's gonna be alive forever. He's gonna be a champion. Like, right. hey, boo. <laughs> hey, ain't gonna be. Hey, it's gonna be a lot less friend zoning. You friend zone trial by combat, bitch. Let's do this. Choose hey. your champion. <laughs> it, listen, I'm just saying it. It fixes a lot of issues in today's society. Imagine, imagine, <laughs> imagine if Trump and Biden had a trial by combat. <laughs> Like bum fights. Who you think gonna win though? Bum fights. Now, listen, I hate to say this, but I think nah, he, I think Biden got it, bro. He runs. He runs. No, no funny. No, I was gonna say that, and I was like, if they let the vice presidents handle shit, Kamala got it. Yeah, she no. Yeah, it. She, <laughs> yeah, she. she vice. Yo, president, is- let me get my axe, vice president. Calm down. I'm grabbing my weapon. Oh my god, this is probably gonna be the corniest shit, but me is like completely sober. Boat, yes, on trial by fire. <laughs> For those watching, you can catch us on um, radio public. Radio Stitcher. public. Keep going, you got this. Apple, <laughs> Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube. Facebook, all complicated Discord. Look for us. Look for Pete. Go ahead, talk Pete. Yes. Um, I have my I have my stuff on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I have a specific website, my personal website. Um, the Benedict. Um, what is the website, man? Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's um. <laughs> that that that, that drink is I am. too. Yeah, I am. 
dot com. All right, what we can hear you repeat that. A Peters I am dot com. Right on. Don't forget, he's also on um, OnlyFans, Fat Daddy, Peanut oh, Butter, Jelly, <laughs> Jelly Rolls dot com. Yo, I'm done with y'all. This corner, I y'all. Only, I just this been doing what OnlyFans was until I met y'all. Like, <laughs> he's like, I just started it, bro. How did you find me? <laughs> and now we're gonna go look for Dex's OnlyFans. Yeah, right. I do. I do the helicopter clockwise for thirty minutes, and then when you tip enough, I, f- I switch to the other side for thirty minutes. I like how you said clockwise. That's that's positive energy. There you go. You yeah, said clockwise. That's not. Listen, you got you got to be ready for anything, bro. Only fans. Right. Oh my God. Right, thank, Get the light. thank you for watching. Come join us again next week. Same yeah. place, same channel. Peace. Peace.